Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are finally in the war spite. Now I've been asked to do this for a long time um, and I've thought about it here and there, never really got around to it. It's not really a ship that I need due to the fact that I like the Queen Elizabeth um, so much. So it's not necessarily one that I would say, hey, you have to go out and get the war spite because there is a tech tree equivalent that is at least as good, if not, in my opinion, better than the War Spite. And that's going to get a lot of people upset. But I'm used to that. So, why do I think that the Queen Elizabeth is better? Because it is. Uh, the only real advantage of this thing versus the Queen Elizabeth that I've seen uh, is the fact that the Queen Elizabeth, or this thing has a little bit more penetration than the Queen Elizabeth. Every other aspect of this is slightly worse than the Queen Elizabeth. Uh, somebody will probably go through the stats, compare the two, and go, oh, but see, you're wrong, this and this and this, and I'd be like, look, I've played both ships quite a bit, and I will be real with you. They are using the same commander with the same, all of, the, everything that you can get is the same, and this is not performing as well as the Queen Elizabeth. Why is that? Well, it comes down to accuracy, I think, more than anything else, and the accuracy of this is not as good as the Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth will put most of its shells on target almost every single shot, or, yeah, literally almost every shot. Uh, this thing does not do that. Uh, it also doesn't turn as well as the Queen Elizabeth. And again, this is just by my feel. I'm not backing it up with stats because that would require me to actually do some work and do some, like, comparing. And if you guys want to see that sort of boringness, I guess you can recommend it in the comments below, and I will try to get that out there then. If that's something that a lot of people are looking for, just let me know. But I don't think that that's what you guys are looking for. You guys wanted to see me in this ship because you guys are thinking that this ship is better than the Queen Elizabeth, and that's what we're out to prove. And in my experience so far, that is not the case. I would rather be in the Queen Elizabeth than the War Spite. Uh, I believe Queen Elizabeth even has more health than this thing. So there's, there's a lot of reasons to like the Queen Elizabeth more than this, and, you know, the benefits of having the extra penetration generally are outweighed by all of the downsides that I've already talked about. Uh, so personally, I still prefer the Queen Elizabeth over this thing, and that's why this hasn't shown up in any videos until just now. And that's mainly because I just wanted to get you guys a video on it, because everybody's been asking for it for so long. So, uh, yeah, this isn't the best video or best game that I've had, but it kind of showcases some of the things that I'm talking about as far as uh, the accuracy not being quite as good. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's bad accuracy, but compared to the Queen Elizabeth, it's just not ex quite as good as you saw with that last salvo. We, we put a hurting on that King George and that King George is just begging for it again. Now, because of the, uh, you know, the nature of armor piercing from the British side anyway. You want to shoot a little bit higher up. Uh, you don't want to be shattering all your shells or uh, bouncing. So we shoot a little higher up on the King George and the King George being broadside on isn't exactly giving us a hard target to hit and we do put five more rounds on target. Um, now I'm not a hundred percent sure if this has a longer range than the Queen Elizabeth but both the Queen Elizabeth and this ship have struggles in the range department. But it's usually not a problem because against your own tier, the Queen Elizabeth is just so good, and thus the War Spite is so good for its tier that you can you don't usually have to slug it out at a range. You just s jump up in there and slug it out close range. The amount of penetrations that you get versus the ability to uh, turn and get all guns involved rather than uh, you know sit there with only your front guns in the fight are definitely preferable and in the worst bites case it just doesn't quite turn as quickly as the Queen Elizabeth and you can see the difference between firing armor piercing and high explosive goodbye King George <laughs> top tier he was a top tier battleship firing at another battleship and he's firing high explosive and he deserves what he got which was he is now at the bottom of the ocean if you don't learn how and when to use armor piercing and high explosive to your full advantage battleships, 
then you are destined to be miserable. Because you're always going to be on the backside of getting your butt kicked. Now, the York just found out what short fuse high explosives all are. Or, why do I always say high explosive? Short fuse armor piercing. I always say high explosive. I don't know why. But it already found out because we just hit him right through the front of a ship where it was plunging fire. Uh, we're going to take one of these torps. Unfortunate. But it doesn't cost flooding. I was unaware that that was a possibility when getting hit with torpedoes. Who knew it? Now, we're kind of getting shot at by another Tier 6, which the cruiser has 210 millimeter guns, and there's a Leander off to my right side. Now, of the two, the Leander is definitely not one that I'm worried about. However, York definitely concerns me. Uh, luckily for me, he's firing high explosive at the broadside of my ship, even though he's got 210 millimeter guns and is fully capable of penetrating my armor. And that gives me enough time to once again finish him off and down goes a tier 6 ship to a tier 5 battleship. And at this point you gotta be thinking, well Spartan, what are what are you um, What are your overall and of course that one causes flood. The one that barely hits the ship and the one that hits right in the torpedo belt <laughs> causes flooding. But the other one, no, no flooding. Anyway. So, what are my my final thoughts on this ship? It's not a bad ship, and if the, if you want to get a premium battleship, you can do a lot worse than this ship. However, you don't really need to get this ship. You can literally just go through the tech tree, get to the Queen Elizabeth, and have an absolute monster of a ship, and you don't have to pay a dime for it. So, I don't know why everybody... Other than the backstory of the war spite, which... If you haven't heard the story of the War Spite, you really, really need to check it out. And it's one of those really super famous ships from history. Uh, it, it has been in ridiculous fights and somehow managed to survive. It's been repaired more than any... Well, maybe the Turpets can beat it as far as repair goes. Because the Turpets was attacked for so long while it was in port and then repaired and then attacked and then repaired. <laughs> like, the Turpets took a beating. While it was sitting stationary in a port trying to hide from everybody. Um, they didn't want to lose the Turpets. Because they knew they were losing the war. And so they kept the Turpets in the port. And the British were so dead set on killing the Turpets. That they had some of the most ridiculous missions ever. To try to kill the Turpets. And ultimately they all failed. <laughs> the Turpets survived. Uh, even ridiculous, like, uh, spec ops missions that there was just so much wrong trying to kill the Turpets uh, while it was in port, and they still managed to not quite sink it. <laughs> Whereas the worst bite was the opposite. The worst bite was thrown down everybody's throats in, in multiple engagements where it did not have the odds of coming out alive, and somehow, badly beaten, yes, but never sunk <laughs> that I know of. Somebody will have to let me know in the comments below. Maybe I've got the story wrong. But I do remember a lot from... And I'm going from memory. I'm not looking this up right now. I'm going from memory. I do remember the war spite being in several engagements where it was outnumbered. And it was just this ship and a couple other ships. And they just absolutely decimated the enemy. <laughs> and they took a beating in the process. But they managed to come out on the other side still intact mostly <laughs> and so as we try to try to come back and defend our base which is something i cannot stress enough and you watch the mini map you seen the destroyer that was spotted off to my left side right so we can't afford to stay in a straight line given that that guy was in a position that he could potentially launch torpedoes against us and he gets spotted again and just in time for us to potentially take a shot at him if our guns were actually trained in the right direction to begin with. But, you know, I knew he was there. I wasn't expecting him to be dumb enough to put himself in a position to get shot. And then there's the accuracy that I was talking about where most of the shells miss. I only get him with one, which is unfortunate because at this range, a Queen Elizabeth would have nuked him. From full health, I've seen a Queen Elizabeth nuke uh, destroyers from this close. Now, maybe he moved a little bit after I pulled the trigger. 
you know, it's it's a possibility. But uh, he got lucky, and he gets to survive for a little while longer. Meanwhile, he has got to be one of the worst torpers I have ever seen <laughs> in my life. Because this isn't the only salvo of torpedoes that he's going to send in my direction that I'm just going to laugh at and sail away. Because he's going to try again, and he's not exactly hiding himself. But firing all of your torpedoes in a wide spread, one behind the other, rather than trying to, like, layer them or anything, he's not doing any of that. And if you're in a... And here's here's one of my favorite shots. Just as we get a chance... To, really? <laughs> we finally catch up and get a chance to shoot at the Leander. And, of course, that's the moment that the friendly kills him. Because that's how that works. <laughs> But this time we've got our guns facing the right direction. We are not going to be taken advantage of again. Next time I get a chance to shoot this little punk, I'm going to take it. And then I immediately start looking at the battleship, completely like disregarding the fact that there was a destroyer right here. We know there is a destroyer here, and we know that he's trying to torp us. But we're not spotted, which means he's not here, right? But if we're not spotted, that means there's only one possibility, and that is, he is behind this island. So, I know this. I'm watching just in case. Unfortunately, I only have two guns focused, and I keep looking back over to try to shoot at the Arizona here. And the moment that I start looking at the Arizona, he pops out. <laughs> Darn you! It's like you know! Why do you always do that to me? And we completely whiffed the shot. Now that was my fault. He started turning well before that. But, you know, he was low enough health that even then, the uh, high explosive was plenty. Uh, and as you can see, once again, he completely whiffs his torpedoes. I don't know who he was shooting at, but it wasn't even me. Like, I didn't have to do anything to avoid them. He just came out, threw his torps in a straight line. and was like, I hope he runs into these. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, I did not. However, we're getting ready to get into a fight with an Arizona, and we only have 10,000 health left. That's not preferable. Arizona, in its own right, is dangerous. And there's no more dangerous ship at Tier 5, other than just a regular New Mexico, than the Arizona, in my opinion. The Arizona, the New Mexico, the Queen Elizabeths, they are absolutely fantastic at Tier 5. The problem is... <laughs> The Arizona doesn't quite get citadel as easily as the New Mexico. And even though he's bound and determined to give me a broadside to shoot at, the Arizona is also more accurate than the New Mexico. And every one of those 12 guns are looking directly at me. I only have 10,000 health. I try to make sure that we're trying to tank it. And as you can see, 6,000 of my health has disappeared. And we got one hit in return. Now... Unfortunately, he goes behind the island, but fortunately, he goes behind the island. Which is going to allow me one more broadside shot at this guy, because I know that I'm dead. If he can get 6,000 damage through me bow tanking, he's going to do it again. And I only have 4,600 health. So I am betting all of my cards on the fact that I'm going to get one last big shot off. There it is, in the water, and we make him pay 10,000 damage. Uh, we end up getting five out of the eight guns to hit. Unfortunately, he's got 12 focused on me, and watch how many shells he hits through my superstructure. I think he missed with two of them. <laughs> that was pretty ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, we go down. We ended up three kills, two of them against tier six ships. Uh, we held our flank, and we managed to go back to support the base, even though it ended up not being needed. And then we came back to punch a guy in the mouth and inevitably die. So, regardless of whether this is better or worse than the uh, Queen Elizabeth, it is a good ship. Uh, we didn't have the best damage output here, but it, you can see that it is survivable, and it also is pretty, you know, easy to use as far as getting your shots on target so if you like what i'm doing punch the like button leave a comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always i will see you in the next video